All right, everybody, welcome back to another week of Tech Support Live. Um, we hope you had a good week. We hope everything's been good and you guys have been staying safe. Um, I'm Alec, for those who are new. Um, I'm an interactive media specialist here at Netgear. So I do a lot of like photography and graphic design, a little bit of video um, for our marketing team. And I'm joined with three amazing people. We'll start with you, Michael. Okay, hi, I'm Michael. I'm technical marketing manager, and um, a lot of my duties are handling um, trade shows, playing with a lot of hardware equipment, and also managing um, reviews on Amazon. And I just get to play with all the new stuff that Netgear has. There you go. Ben? Uh, hi, uh, I am Ben Osvito, aka Zardu Ben, uh, brand experience manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Uh, I, I, I'm just here to answer some questions, usually <laughs> about how to change my IP4 to IP6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's uh, on an Xbox. Exactly, that's Ben's yes. go-to answer. And then uh, Darren, I'm Darren, uh, tech support specialist and community moderator. You'll find me on the Netgear community, answering questions and helping people out. Cool. So you have uh, you have the dream team here, the best support you can get. Um, and um, for those who are you know, joining for the first time, the format is please ask all your questions in the chat and we'll be trying to keep up answering all your questions to the best of our ability. Um, we also have a great team behind the scenes um, who will be feeding any answers that we don't know off the top of our heads. So um, anything you guys got, we're ready to help you out. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll start with the first question, which is um, a designated Ben question. Um, if I'm hardwired into my Xbox One Series X, or is that the new one? Regardless, um, do I need to change my IPv? I've got a few games when I was on uh, IPv4. Um, what I would suggest is that you, one, make sure that your uh, ISP uh, has the capability, and, and then two, um, you'll you want to switch your modem to IPv6, allowing that to pass through. Then you'll want to go to your router and have that uh, in the, I think it's in the advanced settings uh, for the, the Doom OS, and switch that over to allow IPv6, uh, and then go to your Xbox. Um, I would do a hard reset just to make sure that it uh, picks it up. Uh, go over to settings, network and it should be re it should automatically be reading ipv6 and you're good to go the the main difference between um four and six is uh chunks uh but what it does do is allow you to have a lot smoother with party chat and uh what's going on in your game plus uh some of the other microsoft services so I would highly recommend um, switching over if you're an Xbox player. Cool. Um, sorry if anybody noticed a quick dropout. Um, I updated my... Yeah, at some point, sh shouldn't we run out of IPv4 address? <laughs> yeah, your audio is a little crackly on my side. Oh, no. Yeah, video yeah is we uh, on the router. So hopefully it's a little bit better. Um, but the show must go on. Um, so thank you, Ben, for answering that question. Um, the next question that we're getting is from Reclamped, and his question is, what is the yeah, cheapest you're, router? Yeah, still a little bit. Mm, okay, let me drop out of Teams and come back just a second. Uh, hmm, With the cheapest router. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the cheapest router. What's the most cost-effective router? <laughs> um, and, and it really depends on what you're trying to get uh, uh, you know, done and what you're trying to get across. If, if it's just you in your apartment with just your uh, one device, like a PC or uh, a console, and, and you're uh, worried mainly about gaming, not really worried about you know having 20 Internet of Things devices connected, then I would go with the XR300, which would be a, a, a pretty good pricing. Uh, but... If you really want the oomph and power and you want to uh, be able to power a little bit more devices, have a little bit better depth. Cool. 
Um, can I you think guys, we're getting a little bit of lag. Can you guys hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh oh. Yeah, I uh -oh. think. Our, our, I think. Our, yeah, I think it's it's coming in and out. Um, um, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> um, let's just keep going. Hopefully, it'll stabilize in a bit. Um, I am on a network, so still haven't really worked out everything yet. But um, yeah, we'll just keep going. Hopefully, it sorts. Quick out. question: Signed up for the Duma three O with my five hundred. How long will it take uh, to test the new features? Uh, we're going to be testing for a few weeks. Um, we just opened it up. We're going to open it up today to another uh, batch of of testers. So you know, stay close to your email. Follow the instructions. Um, so another uh, another uh, a larger chunk than than went out yesterday went out is going to go out today. So um, so you should see uh, some of that in uh, certain emails. Uh, but we're gonna um, we're gonna keep adding people. Uh, you know, over the next few days. So, so just be aware. Cool. Yeah, and it looked like we skipped over Reclamp's question about using the Nighthawk gaming router if he has AT&T fiber that requires the ONT port on his old gateway. Ooh. Yeah, Matt is, yes, you should be able to use the Nighthawk router, but you're still going to need either um, a gateway or a, a modem from your from AT&T to be able to hook up to the fiber. Because on one yep. side, the modem will have the ONT port, which connects up to the AT&T fiber. The other side will have an Ethernet port, which would be connecting up to your router. Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, we have another question. <laughs> Nimdog's from... right. I'm stealing all the bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm tinkering <laughs> with the settings, so hopefully it'll get better in just a second. Um, but, oh, I can, I can turn the bit rate down. Let's do that. Hopefully this doesn't crash the stream. And you're already sounding a lot better. Okay. Yep. yep. I turned the bit rate down, so should be okay. Um, apologies for any lag we ran into. I also updated uh, QoS, so should be good. Um, so now we'll look all blocky and look like we're in Minecraft, but it'll be fine. <laughs> you know, there's some gamers in the chat. They'll, they'll understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So um, hopefully that's all fixed. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, we have another question from uh, Shady Joker here, who uh, is a big fan of the stream. So thank you for being a fan and thank you for tuning in. Um, but... He asks, uh, I own a business from home and I'm full and I'm, I'm a full time gamer streamer. Plus, my kids are on Wi Fi all day. Is my Nighthawk XR500 good or should I upgrade to this XR700? Um, are you uh, the, the question that you have to ask yourself is, Am I having any issues with my network right now? And if you are, then we can kind of explore that a little bit. But um, I'm, I'm going to say, that uh, the upgrade, I mean, the quad power is going to definitely help in, in that routing. Um, it's just really, what's your situation? So if you could kind of follow up with me, um, that would be fantastic. I just want to also shout out to Reclamp and uh, V1 Bison? 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 <laughs> I, I just butchered that. Yeah, uh, but thanks for for joining the stream. I'm glad I could help. Uh, and M Dog, shout out to you. Yes, thanks. It does seem to be getting a little bit better. So, yeah, um, be fixed. But yeah, if Shady Joker, if you want to just kind of what's going on with it, just let me know. Yeah, yeah. And the big question is, are you having any problems with the XR500? Are you seeing any um, problems where you're basically maxing out the bandwidth or power from it? And that's a good indication if you have to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that yeah. a good um, approach for something like this is um, kind of assess your network overall and the devices on your network. If you can hardwire something, you should be hardwiring it because then you're going to be taking that device off of the airwaves and it, stuff won't be fighting as much. So, um, yeah, I just moved. And I, I have my whole system here. Here now, are you on <laughs> Wi-Fi or are you wired? Um, I'm on my laptop, so I'm on Wi-Fi. But that whole system over there is um, 
it's hardwired. And so, you know, whenever we're streaming 4K or, you know, streaming music or anything, um, I also have my Switch over there, it's going to be hardwired, which takes that whole system off the network, which is going to keep everything a lot smoother. Um, so I would, I would suggest that in addition to considering a new router. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I think we caught up. Wow. This is the first time in a long time, <laughs> you know, that we've caught up. Um, I, I, a a Angelo, do you have anything for us? Yeah, Angelo is usually the keeper of all the fun questions. I'll let him know. All right. He's going to feed us some fun questions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I otherwise, actually... otherwise, it's going to start running into the... <laughs> Where it's like a community access program, you know, where it's like dead air, dead Which air. Um, oh, it looks like you did get a question that just came through, oh, though. Um, from I just came in. Reclamped, yeah. Um, if I'm getting hit offline and don't have a Netgear router right now, um, if I log on to my router settings provided with AT&T, does switching to IPv6 instead of IPv4 make it harder to get hit offline? Um, I would say... No, because I think that most of that's kind of rooted in somebody knowing what your IP address is. Um, I would suggest a VPN. Um, and there is um, an option that Ben probably knows more about than I do um, regarding integrating your VPN into your router OS system, into Duma OS, if you have a Duma router, uh, that is. So um, that would be a good option for safety. I'm sure, Ben, you have more to say. Um, let's see, just kind of get off, I don't have that gear out there now. Um, well, it, it, it definitely, it's 128 encryption, so IPv6 is definitely more encrypted than, than IPv4. Um, the difference is, is 32 bit versus 128 bit. So you're going to definitely, uh, uh, be better off. Um, yeah, I, but then there's ways I can check my router logs because 18 B. Yeah. Uh, so if with that, Michael, with yeah. our routers, you'd be able to check that, that router log and you could, right. You can check the router logs. You won't be able to find out what's happening on the, um, modem or gateway side which is normally right. the thing that's being first hit if someone's trying to do like a DOS attack on your um, system. Uh, but he would be able to see anything that's being passed through the uh, modem over to our router. And then, yeah, you can definitely check the logs on that. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah, I know. A AT I used to have AT&T and they're, they're not 100% they're not with like, you know, um, the most useful um I would say I, I, it, it's very obtuse on how to get any information out of your equipment with them. Um, but it's, it, I would call them, see if you can get like, have you called them and, and uh, see about getting any uh, log information from them? Because they have it, because they're probably selling it. Maybe, I don't know. Almost all IPs kind of uh, have that data, which they, they, they bring up and, and, and utilize. So, cool. Yeah, it could be worth uh, giving them a call or sending them an email. Um, all right, let's see. Question from Dan: um, What Wi-Fi equipment do you guys have at home? Uh, who wants to start? I feel like uh, Michael wants to start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. I'll start. Um, let's see. I've got the R nine thousand um, as my main router. Um, mainly because my girlfriend also um, works from home, and so I've got to make sure that everything stays the same at all times for her. Then I've got the Orbi um, mesh system hooked up so I can extend my Wi-Fi farther out into uh, my yard and out to the driveway and even over to my neighbor's house. And then I have the XR500 hooked up so I can actually play with it. So basically, three different ones. Are they all different SSIDs? Um, the um, Orbi is the same SSID as the um, Nighthawk router. The XR500 is a different SSID. That way I know which one I'm connecting to, and I've got that, um, you know, I can play with it. 
Are uh, and, and then is it all kind of one network, or are you running a two two separate networks? The Orbi and the Nighthawk are one um, subnet, and then the XR five hundred is a different subnet. Oh wow, that see that is that's that's pro level. That's just advanced stuff. <laughs> that's just that's crazy. Uh, that, <laughs> it's awesome at the same time. Yeah, um, you want the best in your house. You know, you got yeah. coverage everywhere. Um, Alec, what do you what do you have behind you? Behind me, I have the XR five hundred <laughs> in <laughs> full view. Um, yeah, I really like it. Um, our house is two stories, so um, I also have. I haven't set it up yet, but you can see I have an X six S extender right here. So we're gonna set that up upstairs. Um, I'm the only person downstairs, so um, it'll be nice for everybody else upstairs to to have an extender. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it's perfectly smooth because the st the stream is a little choppy, but it's typically pretty smooth. Um, yeah, I've had it for about a year now, and and really no hiccups yet. I, I like it. I, I like the the controllability of it as well. Like when we were lagging earlier, I gave myself some more. Um, bandwidth with the QoS slider. Um, so we've been pretty smooth for the past 10 minutes and hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> but um, yeah, that controllability is great. Um, having the Doom OS software. I should have done it live on stream, all my adjustments, but um, yeah, I love it. What about you, Ben? So um, I have a CM1000 modem that runs to my XR500, which then splits off to a SX10 uh, uh, switch, which all of my gizmos and gadgets and, and doohickeys and whirly gigs are all connected to. Uh, so that connects my um, uh, Xbox, that connects my uh, streaming laptop, that connects my... Um, my sonar or Sonus uh, music um, printer, that's all through there. Then I have uh, a, a uh, was it EX7000 uh, mesh extender as well that sends the Wi Fi signal to the, the back of the house. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether or not I'm like I'm I think my extender is a little too close and I think I'm I'm uh, on the five ch channel because I feel like I'm I, I get some bump um where my uh at least my phone gets confused as to what is connecting to um so I've got to do some adjustments with that but uh but overall not too bad uh everything runs pretty darn smooth um and uh, and that, uh, that there's a lot of uh, Internet of Things that are that are all attached to it, so um, pretty smooth running. Yeah, I uh, I remember uh, a couple months ago, I gave one of my friends an old router for his house, and they installed an extender as well. Um, they bought, I believe it was the wall plug, so R6400, I think, something like that. Um, but they had a big issue with the handoff process because they were too close. So yeah. that's a good tip just in general for anybody yep. who has extender and they might have a question about extenders is that if they're too close, your devices can just get really confused on what to do because there's two strong signals and it's like, what do I do? Um, so kind of a good point. And then Darren, you have the uh, XR700, right? Yeah, I'm using the 700, but unfortunately he can't really take full advantage of it with AT&T fiber. The way it comes into my apartment is it's in my roommate's closet inside of an electrical panel, and all that is ran through Ethernet throughout the home. So I have to kind of use the router built into the AT&T unit uh, in order to use the Ethernet ports on my walls without running cords across the whole apartment. Mm, gotcha. And you're in... LA, right? San Diego. San Diego. Okay. I know that like a lot of the SoCal cities have fiber more abundantly than they do up here. So 
Interesting thought, but um, we have a whole list of new questions here. Um, yeah, we, we got up. Thanks, Dan, for the uh, for the, for the for the question. Um, you know, we, like like we said, we we uh, we live, breathe these products, and we use them all at home. So, a uh, question from Adalberto, who is a return viewer. So, welcome back, Adalberto. Um, great news. He has his CM1200 hooked up to my AX12, and my speeds have improved significantly. It's a good combo, so they should have. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, question. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Cat6 is hooked up to his Apple TV, Smart TV, and PS4 Pro, and it's showing an amber light. Slow speeds as well. Should I switch to Cat5e? Possibly network cards on my devices don't support Cat6. Normally, the amber light on um, the um, router and on any switches, when it goes to amber, it's usually saying that it's switching down to the um, slower 10100 speed instead of the gigabit speed. A Cat6 cable shouldn't um, cause it to actually switch down to the slower speed unless it's a poorer quality Cat6 cable. The better the cable, the um, better um, signal um, strength and less signal loss. Um, so I would want to know um, where the amber light is actually being seen. And um, then we could determine whether um, the device is supposed to be running at 10100 or that it's actually being switched down to 10100, which uh, gigabit connection shouldn't um, be switched down because it's auto switching. Gotcha. Yeah, and I know that something that we you know, advertise a lot um, especially in the NPG brand, is wireless as good as wired. And so, you know, we always do suggest having a wired connection for freeing up bandwidth. But, you know, if something's going wrong, your wireless network with the CM1200 and an AX12 is going to be really solid. Um, so, you know, there's worst case scenario is that you just switch it to wire, uh, wireless. And that's, that's not really a bad case. Um, so if you can't figure out what's going wrong with, with, with that, I would, I would just go to wireless. Now, what is he connecting? So Apple TV, smart TV. So one thing to also check is that Apple TV and smart TV, uh, make sure that when you turn those off, they're not using bandwidth. Then that could also be a problem. Yeah, Apple this, TV, uh, smart TVs love to, to vamp. Um, PS4 Pro, we've, we've talked, I, I think that's my, I should start putting a list of the questions that I always <laughs> get, but PS4 Pro is the second, second question I always have. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Um, and, but yeah, I would, I would definitely to, to check. My suspicion is you're getting slow speeds because Apple TV and smart TV are updating all the time just to make sure that they can feed you that awesome trailer for, um, you know, the expanse or, or whatever, uh, you happen to be watching. Yeah. Those, uh, and I did look devices. up that orange light on the PS4. Um, and, um, it says that the orange light on the PS4 means that it's in standby mode. And I'm yeah. assuming that, mm. um, it's not in standby mode when he's seeing it, but, yeah. um, that is what that light is normally supposed to mean. Interesting. Oh, here's a here's a question for for you, Michael. Yeah, this is this is for for you to, uh, I guess, myth bust or or, or verify. Um, I've changed my entire network from Cat Five E to Cat Eight, and the performance of my XR Five Hundred has improved dramatically. Just want to throw yep. it out there. Yep, and the most likely answer there is it's because the Cat Eight cables are exceptionally high quality, um, as opposed to the Cat Five E. So it's probably the lack of signal, the less signal loss on his Cat 8, which is giving the better performance. Because right now, Cat 8 cables are um, premium cables that you'd be buying as your very highest end cables. So uh, most likely that's due to just the quality difference between his Cat 5e and his Cat 8. Here's, here's a quick uh, side question on that. What's the price difference between, let, let's say, a 5e and a Cat 5? Do you, do you know? Is it a it's been a while since I looked. Um, but I, the last time I looked, it was something like, you know, one to two dollars for the Cat Five E for um, a you know standard six foot, and then it was somewhere in the range of sixteen to twenty for a Cat Eight. Prices may have changed since I looked at it, but there was a dramatic cost difference. Yeah, that's that's pretty significant. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. We have a follow up, or a, uh, not a follow up, but a question from M Dog here. Um, I have the R eight thousand gigabyte down and up internet. Gigabyte up internet is uh, it's pretty fast. Wow. I don't yeah. think I've ever heard of that. <laughs> um, That's crazy. When I'm streaming and playing Valorant, great game. Um, I'm getting ping spikes from 22 uh, milliseconds up to two to 400 milliseconds at times while it's happening. Um, I ran a speed test and it looks normal. I'm running LAN. Should I change to an XR router for more control? So I guess the core of the question is what is causing, what causes that ping huge spikes? spike. Yep. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of possibilities, but I'll, I'll let you guys give him your thoughts. My my first in, in um uh, my my first thought is uh, M Dog, do you have a do you have an Amazon Fire Stick or a Google Chromecast anywhere in your network? That's my first question. Yeah, that they're probably just hogging could, the network for like little seconds of time. For just a little second at a time, because um, gaming doesn't need a lot of space. But gaming needs a really consistent stream. Uh, think of it like anything that, like, uh, it, it's like a laser beam. And if anything that, like, gets it, blocks that laser beam just for a second will throw gaming off pretty huge. And that's where that's why you see that, like, 400 millisecond spike. Um, uh, with that, um, that sounds like something was, like, doing, like, those, like, mini updates. That's what it really sounds like. Uh, I don't know, uh, Michael. What do you think? Oh, he, he just, um, I uh, did actually do a little. I did a little bit of searching um, while you were talking, and it looks like it's most likely caused by um, Valorant um, because there's quite a few um, entries where people are specifically talking about regular ping spikes going up to like 700 in that particular game. So it sounds like it's the game side of things that's causing the ping spikes. Game server, and yep. and. Uh, Valorant's still in beta, so you know that's a that's a load issue on their side. Yeah, definitely could be because um, that's a good answer, Michael. Because he just said he doesn't have any uh, IoT uh, TV devices, so yeah, it's that's probably what it is. Yep. I know it is a new game. Um, I guess M Dog is a follow up question from us: Is do you play any other games? Are you playing? You know, you seeing that in like Call of Duty, Call of Duty, or... uh, League of Legends. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to know if you're seeing it in League of Legends because they're both Riot games. Maybe there's just a Riot yeah, that would issue. Be. Um, be. Okay, um, let's see. We have a question from one of our very own uh, Deegan. Do your neighbors use your Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my comment earlier, um, a previous neighbor did before she moved out of her place. Um, uh, I gave her the guest network password so she'd actually have access to the network. So, yeah, and also when a neighbor up the street, their um, internet connection went um, out for a couple of days, so I gave them the password so they could connect in. And the signal was strong enough to hit 100 feet up the street where their house was. <laughs> See, Michael, is, uh, is he's the Wi-Fi god, but he's a generous god. He shares, yes. he shares <laughs> exactly. his Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll say my XR500 pops enough uh wi-fi signal i can get a uh, signal almost to my car which is parked in the the parking area away from me and the, it, the internal cor courtyard i can actually uh get pretty okay signal uh by the pool and the extender does kick enough energy out to put it in the backyard so nice uh yeah Good. but i have all of i have my network all on lockdown so Sam. Yeah, we uh we just moved, so hopefully nobody hacked it yet. I think our password's decent enough. Still one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they teach you uh, as an employee at Nike is to make your password one, two, three, four. It, exactly. One, two, three, four is the easiest way. Okay. Let's see here. We have a question from George. Actually, um, our passwords are really good. They're so like, funny. <laughs> they're they're so funny and they're that it's that little sticker and and for the first time ever like my my XR five hundred 
I laughed so hard what it is, what the password was. I kept it. I was like, I this is this is pretty comical. I'll keep it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, for anybody who doesn't have a Netgear router, um, we randomly generate an adjective and a noun and then three letters or three numbers and they get pretty funny um it's, it's like a running joke in the company um okay we have a question from george here um who's getting the dreaded wi-fi exclamation point issue with one device on the rbr 50 with the rbs 40 v doesn't occur with the same frequency when the rbs 40 v is turned off tried different settings but no change ideas sounds kind of like the RBS, the Orbi voice is causing some acute problem on one device, which is really interesting. Um, I feel like this is a Michael or Darren question, because I don't know. Do you know Ben? Uh, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a huge Orbi user. Yeah, I've only used either. it once or once before, so I'm a little out of my depth on that one. Yeah, normally the exclamation point that you're getting um, on the Wi-Fi means that um, the client device is connected up to the Orbi, but it's not actually getting a connection to the um, internet. And it does sound like the RBS 40V is, um, you know, causing the problem. If he turns it off and the problem doesn't occur, um, or doesn't occur with the same frequency, I'm assuming happening a lot as opposed to happening once every month. Um, then it might be that when the RBS 40 is on, for some reason that device is connecting to the RBS 40 instead of the RBR 50, and there's some connection problem um, there. If that's the only device that is having that problem, um, it might be worth um, having us look into it more and find out if there's some compatibility issues with the RBS 40 that are popping up. Um, if it's happening even on a semi-regular basis on your RBR 50, then it's probably not the RBS 40 causing the problem. It's more of a um, internet connection problem that needs to be looked into. Gotcha. Okay, well, um, I don't have much to say, Michael, you did a great job. <laughs> My, Michael, do you uh, think that it, maybe it's an IP conflict when that satellite gets turned on and assigns another device the same IP as that device? It's, it's possible. Um, normally, you can still actually get out to the um, internet, even if um, two devices have the same IP. But then information coming back often gets jumbled. And it is worth um, checking to find out what the IP address is on your device when you just have the RBR50 on. And then when you turn the rbs 40 v double check your IP address on your client device. And when you see that problem come up, go back and look at your IP address and see if it's changed for some reason. Because once you've gotten that IP address, you sh um, the RBR50 should be giving that to that single device every time. But it is worth checking. Cool. OK, well, um, he mentioned that he has a static IP just now. I don't know if that really impacts your answer at all. Um, with the static IP, that actually could create problems um, if, for some reason, um, the RBR50 is actually handing that IP address out to a different um, device. I'd recommend going to a um, 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 a non-static DHCP um, IP and then see if the problem continues. Cool. So give that a try, George. Um, just for everybody who is tuning in right now, um, just a heads up, this is a two-hour stream, so um, if we give you some advice at the beginning of the stream and you want to try it out and then uh, report back to us and see if it works, um, we can, we can follow up on your questions. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, just another reminder, um, since we're kind of, I kind of broke the flow a little bit. Um, we really appreciate when you guys like the stream, it helps us kind of boost the stream and help more people out, um, who might be unaware that we're doing the stream. Um, it boosts us up on the YouTube page. So if you guys are enjoying the stream and we help you out, please drop a like. We appreciate it. Um, but I don't want to dwell on that too much. Let's move on. Oh, you don't want to dwell on the like and subscribe? <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Share it on Facebook. Yeah, like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and or. Uh, but uh, subscribing will let you know when we uh, are doing more of these kind of things. So, uh, But uh, liking definitely helps. So, you know, just give us a little thumbs up. It looks like uh, George has tried 
both. I, I think we need to get him to contact our email address and we need to work with him a little bit more on that issue with his Orby. If uh, Christine or Angela could post that in the chat. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll definitely have to follow up on that because that sounds like a Look very at that. Thank unique. you guys. Three people just hit, four people just hit like, <laughs> awesome. You guys rock. <laughs> I really see it wasn't it. me. I didn't hit like that many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, George, we'll, we'll send you an email address that you can uh, reach out to. That seems like a very specific issue um, that could be caused by many a thing. So um, hopefully we can get that sorted out. But um, in the meantime, uh, we have a follow-up from Ad Alberto, and he says that the amber light is showing up on the CM1200 and the AX12. Um, he tried two different Cat6 cables from different companies that I purchased on Amazon, and it's still showing an amber light. But when he switches to Cat5, it shows white. They are high-quality rated Cat6 cables. Um, and he wants to hardwire to take full advantage of the speed. So I don't know what could be causing, like, compatibility issues with cat six but the jump from cat five e to cat six isn't like completely game changing like it's not going to give you like an extra 100 megabytes or anything so if you do have a cat five cable and it's working um you can stick with that uh, michael i see some facial expressions <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was going to i was going to say that um on the as you were saying with the cat 5e and the cat 6 not seeing a big difference if they're quality cables then yeah you in most cases you're probably not going to see any difference um, an yeah. example is that i had my main pc wired up to the sx10 um, switch that has a 10 gigabit port and then from there i had the other 10 gigabit port um, connected up to my ready nas that has a 10 gigabit um, card in it so basically it was 10 gigabit all the way through and I had Cat5 um, E cables in there, ran um, file transfer test, and then I swapped all the cables out for Cat6. And the file transfer um, was exactly the same with both 5E and 6. So oh, I was wow. already maxed it out with 5E. Yeah, I mean, for domestic use with, I mean, you're not going to be able to pull, you're not going to, it's not going to bottleneck. Like you're not going to be able, you're not going to have 10 gig Wi-Fi coming in to your home. That's just not a service offered by anybody, at least to my knowledge. Um, if it is, let me know. <laughs> but um, for domestic use, Cat 5e is plenty fast. So I would definitely suggest yeah. if Cat 5e is working. Um, I know there's kind of that like nomenclature thing in your head where you're like, Cat 6 has to be better. It's, it's, it's one bigger than five. Um, it's really not going to make a big difference. So uh, use what works, I would say. Um, question specifically for Michael. Well, quickly, a follow-up from MDog. Um, he said that he sometimes gets it in Apex as well, the, the pink spikes. Um, it sounds like something is making it spike, but it's strange. Yeah, I'll try it with nothing on the network and adjust and just the streaming PC to see if it's the TV. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, here's another question: um, Is it happening when you're streaming, or is it happening when you're gaming as well? Uh, so, if you're just gaming, are you seeing that that ping spike, or are you when you're streaming, are you seeing that ping spike? Uh, the hardest thing to track down is those weird giant spikes. Um, so, it, you know, we're here for you. You're here every week. Let's let's try to figure out figure it out and uh, and and try to troubleshoot it. But it's going to be a little bit difficult. You're going to have to like kind of do a uh, turn this off. Make sure that that's off, and and just kind of eliminate all possibilities. And even at that, it could be a server issue, though. So. Yeah, not 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 comforting words, but uh, but it's it's the best that we have at this moment. Cool. He says it's when he's streaming, so it could be just overloading the network. It could, it, yeah, it could be could be a possibility of uh, either Streamlabs or OBS not playing well. Um, yeah, there's 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 a bunch. Cool. Okay, so a uh, question from Shady Joker, who's uh, one of our biggest fans. He's got some popcorn and candy he's munching on while he's watching the show. So, you know, thanks for tuning in. Um, Michael, if I upgrade to the XR700 from the 500, what am I getting for the money? 
Well, I'm stealing the, this answer from Ben, since he'd be the one that could easily answer this, but um, some of the things that you're getting are you're getting a faster processor. So um, if you have a lot of um, hardware in your network, it'll be able to handle it more. You also get active antennas, which is um, something that allows the um, router to amplify the Wi-Fi signal that's coming into it in the antenna before it actually gets down to the motherboard, which is good because if you amplify the signal um, only when it um, hits the motherboard, you're also amplifying the signal of all the other chips around it that are causing noise. So it right. basically helps give you a slightly cleaner signal than that. Also, if you're a real tech head and you um, actually have fi um, fiber um, cables in your home network, it has a fiber port on it. So for instance, if you had a um, ready NAS that had a fiber port, you could plug that directly into the fiber port on the router and then you would get a 10 gigabit um, connection there. Um, if you happen to be one of those few people that has an 11 AED device um, um, for um, Wi-Fi, say for instance, some of the um, beta um, VR headsets, the XR700 um, also supports 11 AD, so it does the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi just within the room. That's not actually going to go through the walls. Um, and yes, if you if you needed two extra devices wired up, yeah, there's two more ports. Two more ports. There's two more ports. Plus yep. port aggregation. And you can actually do um, aggregation on two ports. Yeah. So yep. if you happen to have a switch that does link aggregation, you can set two of the ports on the router plugged into two of the ports on your um, switch, and it'll treat those kind of as if they were um, all one port. It basically does a round robin every time someone wants to talk, goes to port one, then port two, then port one, then port two. But um, overall, you do get more throughput because of the way it's um, handling it, if you can do the link aggregation. Cool. Um, we have a question from Juan here. Um, who is asking a question that we get almost every week, and we hate to answer it, <laughs> but um, when's the new portable hotspot for Netgear coming out, the M5? Um, it's something we haven't um, locked down yet, and we can't announce yet um, because it's not locked down. Um, but stay tuned. We, I'm certain that we will one day be doing a live event all about that um, device because I know it's in high demand and we can totally get the product manager on the stream and talk about it more once the time comes. We just can't do it yet. Um, so I know it's an unfulfilling answer, but it's all we can say for now. Um, so moving on, we have a question from Marlon. Cool name. Um, I have a Fios router and one, one gig connection and a Netgear extender WN2500RP. Sounds like an elderly extender. I, I've never heard of that. Yep. Um, I'm not getting more than 70 megabits on Wi-Fi. My house is split um, 1,300 square feet, router in the rear of the house, and extender 25 feet away on the same level. Um, wanted to go to Wi-Fi 6, hoping to get higher speeds. Wondering if I should be looking for a Nighthawk router or mesh. So um, this is what I would first and foremost suggest as an immediate solution is I would move your extender upstairs. Um, 25 feet away on the same level is really not that far. I mean, the room I'm in isn't even, I mean, this is, this is, this room is bigger than 25 feet. Um, it's not, we, we talked about that kind of the handoff issue earlier. Um, you're going to have yeah. two strong connections and your devices are just going to be like, what do I do? There's two good connections. It's going to wig out. So I'd move that upstairs, um, first and foremost. And then, um, what would you guys suggest for a Wi-Fi system for him if he has gigabit speeds? Well, so, he definitely wants to upgrade um, to start with because um, I looked at the tech specs on the WN2500RP and it's only an 11N. And yeah. that right there is going to be a big bottleneck because it's not even using AC um, speeds. So he definitely wants to upgrade um, that product. And then, I Ben, you were going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to say whether you want to go with a Nighthawk or a Mesh really depends on how active or how how much control or performance you if if you're if you're like me or probably everybody else on this stream um, if you're a bit of a tinkerer, a bit of a gearhead, bit of a uh, one person put a negative. Oh, sorry, squirrel. <laughs> um, but uh, 
if, if if you're into like trying to get as much performance out of everything that you that you have, you know, whether or not it's a car, uh, a computer, uh, your Xbox, your network, um, Nighthawk routers and, and and the Nighthawk mesh products um, are are probably going to be more towards your performance um, range. If you are a type of person that is, I love technology. I just want it to work when it comes out of the box and I don't want to have to mess with it ever again. Um, then I would go more towards the Orby side of the, the fence. Um, what you're going to get out of both are going to be high quality products that are going to, you know, pump Wi-Fi everywhere that you need. Um, it, it just depends on, on, on whether you want to be able to tinker with it a little bit more. Uh, the Nighthawk has a, a little bit more options as far as performance and tinkering. And uh, while the Orbi is sort of an all-encompassing system, um, on the Nighthawk side, you can mix and match a little bit more. That's where I would probably ask myself the first question. Where where do you want to go with this? Yeah, and then once you've kind of solved that, you just need to find which of our products is rated for the speed that you want to get. I mean... If you're paying for gigabit speed, then you're going to want to get a gigabit unit. But if you're paying for, you know, 200 megabytes per second and you have no intention of going up, then you don't need to be getting a unit rated for gigabit speeds. So, um, yeah, we, uh, and then to kind of add to Ben's point, we kind of compare Orbi to Nighthawk as like Mac to PC or like iPhone to Android. It's, it's kind of just what experience do you want? Ultimately, they do a very yeah. similar thing. It's just kind of the experience aspect. So, yeah, if if you're comfortable getting under the hood and making some tweaks uh, and making some performance stuff, then then Nighthawk is is an awesome way to go. Totally. Um, if you just want to set it up, set it like those old infomercials, set it and forget it, like uh, <laughs> like it's a rotisserie, then then you know Orbi is 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 gotcha because the the thing that makes Orbi so awesome is it's so solid that you just set it up and it's, it's good to go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, got a question from Gonzalo. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. I was wondering if you could add an option of anti-war driving to all your routers. I, I don't know what that is. Is that a joke? Well, I can tell you, I can tell you what it is. First of all, it's basically you're driving around um, the neighborhood and you're looking for open Wi-Fi signals. Oh that you can then connect to. So you can basically either um, leech off of their Wi-Fi or you can possibly hack into their network. Their, yeah, um, so as far security. As, yeah, and as far as adding options of anti-war driving, well, technically there's no such thing that you could put in there because the whole concept is they're driving around, they're picking up um, your Wi-Fi signal and seeing if they can hack in. There um, are a few things that you can do. One of the first is you cannot broadcast your SSID. That doesn't actually mean, though, that it um, won't be picked up. There is pieces of software that can actually still see a hidden SSID. The next thing is make sure that um, the passwords that you have on your Wi-Fi are, um, you know, um, very hard passwords. So there's no way that they're going to be able to randomly um, connect in. If you really want to um, lock down your system, if you have um, one of our routers that um, allows you to... Um, set a, a whitelist for MAC addresses, you can actually set it up so only those devices in your home with specific MAC addresses can use your network. So even if someone was able to hack into your Wi-Fi, they wouldn't be able to do anything with it because your um, your router would basically say, you don't have a um, whitelisted MAC address, so you can't use our system. Um, other than that, you know, it's really just comes down to security and making sure you've got very hard passwords. And then someone doing war driving, they're not going to be able to be crack in. And trying to use a brute force method sitting out in their car, they're going to be there for weeks as it's trying to crack your um, Wi-Fi. I had never heard of that. That's interesting. I am going to have to nominate that for the no prize of the of the day. That's a <laughs> that was a, a stumper of a question, but once again, uh. Michael's able to just brush that off like boom, I got it. Like like amazing. I'm 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 just blown away cuz I didn't even know that what war driving was. Wow, that is crazy. Well, if you want to have fun, go and Google um, war driving and Pringles can. And you'll okay. see an interesting 
thing where you take a Pringles can and you basically wired that up as sort of a directional antenna. Huh. I've never heard of this before. That's really interesting. I thought it was like a gaming term, like a, like a gaming joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. No. Acting with a Pringles tube. That there is, you go. What? <laughs> this crisp can can be an effective tool, tool for curious hackers. Wow. Yeah, it makes a great directional antenna. The cantenna is, is, yep. is what it's called. That is amazing. All right, question from RR. Um, I have a CM 1100 with a gigabit cable service, but I'm only getting about 550 to 620 megabytes per second on the Nighthawk speed test. I noticed that not all channels are locked. Any idea what to do or what, or what it could be? If he's getting that um, on a um, hardwired speed test, um, then that doesn't really have to do with any channels um, being locked. He should be able to get um, closer to his gigabit speed off of the CM 1100. Um, I would probably remove the router out temporarily, connect up to your CM 1100 um, with a um, Ethernet cable, and make sure you've rebooted the CM 1100 and then booted the um, PC that you're using to run the test on and see whether you're getting those same speeds. If you're actually getting the gigabit speed or close enough to it, you won't get a gigabit, but you'll probably be getting 900 to 950. Um, then we know the CM1100 isn't causing the problem. Um, if you're getting the same speeds going directly through the CM1100, then um, it's not the Nighthawk problem. We have to look at the CM1100 because all the Nighthawk speed test does is tell you what speed is the Nighthawk router getting talking out to the internet. So it helps to break it down to find out, is it the um, router that's the problem or the CM1100? Okay. Well, um, we'll let you do a little bit of diagnosing on that. If you want to follow up with us, um, let us know what you find out. We'll see how we can help you out. Um, okay, question from Adalberto. He's going to stick with the Cat5e. I don't expect his devices to reach more than... 500, meg 500 megabytes per second. Have you guys had any reported issues of this with the AX12? Any recommended cable brands for CAT6? I want to take full advantage of the one gigabyte service that I'm paying for. So um, I guess what I would test, uh, what would you test, Michael, to see like if he's getting that maximized service? Let's see. Do you, um, the maximized service on his um, AX12? Or are you talking still about the CM1100? Um, this is for Adalberto, for the AX12. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, the Cat, Cat 5, Cat yes. 6 mm -hmm. issue. Oh, recommended cable brands for the Cat um, 6. I really don't have any um, specific um, brands uh, myself. I usually will go out, I'll um, look at a m multiple vendors for Cat 6, read a bunch of the reviews and just see what other um, users are experiencing with their cables. And always don't go for the cheapest brand that you find on Amazon because you know that that's not gonna be a high quality um, cable. You do wanna have you know, a decent quality or better cable um, to be able to take advantage of um, the Cat 6. Gotcha. And then um, do you think there could be any bottleneck um, in his system that's stopping him from getting a gigabyte on like his PS4 or his Apple TV? Um, I, on something like that, I would probably want to um, try a actual physical speed test off of a um, PC that's wired in um, to make sure that it isn't um, something specific to those types, the other types of devices um, that he has on there. Because I don't always trust like running a PS4 speed test whether the PS4 itself is having, is the reason why you're not actually seeing the fastest possible speed off of um, his network. But if all of his devices aren't getting more than 500, the wired as well as the wireless, then um, that's something we should look into with his AX12 because he definitely should be able to. Yeah, I, I would guess that with what we've heard about the PS4, um, it, it just might not, it's, Ethernet capability just might even might not go past 500. You might be maxing it out. 
Um, same with the Apple TV. So I would definitely hardwire it to a, a computer um, and see what you end up with and make sure that that computer has, you know, Ethernet that can go up to a gigabyte. Another thing to consider is, um, um, what was I going to say? You know, speed, speed testing is one thing, and then actually downloading stuff is another thing. You're never really going to ever download something at a gigabyte per second. Um, like, if you're downloading games or stuff like that, like, there's going to be a bottleneck coming from the server that you're downloading it from. So um, take that into consideration if you're kind of using that to assess the speed of your network. Um, okay. A question from Mr. Lately. I have an RX80 and run a pie hole on my network. I don't know what that is. Is it like a raspberry thing? Um, oh, did we skip over the uh, how many mesh extenders? Oh, yeah, we did. Kevin Hart. From Kevin. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. How many mesh extenders can you hook to a Nighthawk router? Is it only one extender? Can you hook up two? I think you can hook yes, up you, three. You, about um, it, it's recommended not to go above three you could actually yeah. um hook up more but then um the load on your system starts getting um, heavier which means things are going to start slowing down but you can hook up um up to three um safely without having to worry about affecting any of your speeds there we go cool and then i also got a follow-up for uh Alberto's question um on the AX12, there are multi-gig ports and then non-multi-gig ports. Um, I don't have an AX12 on hand, so I can't show you. But um, if you have a device that you know can accept a high speed from your Ethernet cable, use your multi-gig port for that device. Um, and then that should get you to where you want to be as far as, as far as speeds. Cool. So, um, I think, I think we're caught up. Did we miss any? Now we're on Mr. Lately now. Did, did, we, uh, did we answer that? Sorry. No, I don't, I don't think we did. Okay. So uh, Mr. Lately, um, I have an RX 80 and run a pie hole on my network. Will I have any problems or quality loss if I has my, have my raspberry Pi handle DHCP? I don't know. I, I, I don't know that question. That's a, the stumper. Oh, actually, I looked up Pi Hole isn't a Raspberry Pi. Um, Pi Hole's a Linux network um, level advertisement and internet tracking blocking app, which acts as a DNS sinkhole. So I've never actually looked at that um, before. Yeah, yeah, they, they run it on their Raspberry Pi, uh, usually to block ads and stuff mm -hmm. like that on their network. I mean, uh, that's very a tinkering type of thing. It could ha have problems because it's like very open source and people writing code for it all the time. It's something you have to tinker with maybe a little bit more than a normal off-the-shelf product. It could, but you possibly could be just fine running that uh, to block a uh, ads and stuff like that that people typically use the pie hole for yeah it, so it sounds like uh, because it is open source you just got to be more aware of the changes uh and change log than than you would on on a, a typical off-the-shelf product is it open source yes yeah 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 you run it you run it on a raspberry pi yeah you just have to just pay attention to to the changes and updates to it um. Yep. And if you're finding that it um, is slowing some things down, you can um, turn off the DHCP on your Raspberry Pi and um, have the um, Rax80 doing the DHCP. So that at least takes a little bit of the load off of it. Cool. Yeah, we've never, uh, I've never heard of that before. So this guy must be a pretty invested power user if he's if he's at that level of tinkering so good for you um mr lately um i think we are caught up on the questions again so um angela so i found oh sorry go ahead i oh sorry not to interrupt but i found a, a, a interesting little tidbit about war driving that i didn't know about so war driving actually comes originates from war dialing 
which goes all the way back to that game, War Games, where Matthew yep. Broderick would dial a bunch of number, like phone numbers in sequence, uh, hoping to get a hold of a router at random. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and in that movie, what he was looking for is because it was on the old dial-up modems, you, yeah. it would dial through, and when it heard the um, noisy response from modem on the other end, it would flag that, and it's like, okay, there's a modem there. Now let's start working on trying to hack into it. Right, and 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 apparently, war driving is uh, there's there's really no um, uh, right now. There's no way of of stopping you from scanning for uh, the uh, Wi-Fi networks once you take the next step and try to crack into it is where you're you're crossing the legal boundary. Yeah, and when you think about it, there really would never be a way where you could stop someone from scanning for it. The whole yeah. concept of Wi-Fi is it's got a broadcast, otherwise there's no Wi-Fi. And as long right. as you're broadcasting, now, what you can do is you can put aluminum foil on all your walls on the inside of your house, and that way your signal stays in your house and doesn't go outside. It uses <laughs> up a lot of aluminum foil, though. That sounds like a, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, that sounds like a Better Call Saul solution. <laughs> have you guys seen that show? <laughs> yes, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> all right, cool. Um, just wanted to shout out another one of the regulars. Uh, Vanessa is back. So, Vanessa, thank you for tuning back in. Um, appreciate having um, you as a regular, but um, I was just about to go into the filler questions and we got another question. We'll come back to the filler questions, um, but we have a question from Shady Joker one um, How do I make one machine get 2.4 gigabytes and another machine get 5 gigahertz? Okay, I think he means gigahertz for both of those um, on his Nighthawk. And this is pretty easy, actually. Uh, in the settings for your router, you should be able to split those signals uh, into the 5 and to the 2.4. I'm not sh exactly yep. sure what that option is called. Um, smart Connect. Smart Connect. So disable yes. Smart Connect, and it should split it into two, and then you can pick what you want. Um, definitely uh, good to have uh, IoT devices on the 2.4 because it's kind of slower, but it goes farther. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we can do the filler. And questions. Vanessa's right. Oh. On the question of the war driving, just make your home into one large Faraday cage, and then you don't have to worry about it. That's yep. the same thing as putting aluminum foil on the walls. No signal goes out. There you go. Okay, so I, I, I just really want to answer the filler question because it's a good question. Angelo, he really came through on this question. So um, ah. he... he Misspelled segue really bad, though. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, yes, Scott, it, it better not be how to spell segue. So. <laughs> no, it's how to write a segue. Or, yeah. All right. Um, PS5 impressions. What is the future um, of next-gen gaming? Um, so I guess kind of specifically about the PS5, but also mm. maybe a little bit about the new Xbox. Oh, oh that's uh, that's a... That's a, that's a tight thing. So, um, so the crazy thing is, and, and people people have hopped on this. They're like, you know, what is the price? I think it's like what four is it four ninety nine five ninety nine for the um, for the uh, PS five, and an people are like, uh, it, it, it usually ends up being about that. If if you remember, remember when the the PlayStation 3 first came out, people were like, that's crazy. Um, but but people will pay that, you know. Um, is uh, So here's the thing that Sony always has. Uh, Sony is really good at locking down those exclusives, I feel. And, and, but, and they also, you know, they're going to play around with the HD camera, control chargers, uh, wireless headsets. Uh, they're going to play play around with some some technology, uh, which which does make it interesting. Um, it's got a solid state drive, which is good. Um, they're saying it'll support up to 100 gigabytes. Or gig, you know that's fantastic. Um, that that's that'll check a lot of games on there. Um, but um, 
yeah, overall, I'm, you know, if you are in the, um, I, I, I think that if you're in the, the Sony, um, ecosystem, I think that the, the five is going to be a good, uh, you know, good console for you. Um, I, I'm, I've been in the Xbox ecosystem and all my friends are on Xbox. So I'm, I'm probably going to stay over in Xbox. Yeah. It seems like, um, you know, something that you notice a lot with like phones and laptops is this really quick. Um, well, I shouldn't say quick. Um, no, I guess it is quick. It's like, you notice the changes, they're small but significant between each generation. And I feel like with consoles, since they can't come out like every like five, six, seven years, the change between one to the other is like massive. And I feel like this year it's especially yep. big. Um, mm-hmm. I, I haven't looked too much into the PS5 yet. I didn't see the video yet, but I know for the Xbox One, like for that price, it's you're, you're getting a device that's like as good as a thousand dollar PC. And I think that a lot of that has to do with you know, they're able to cut these really good deals with hardware manufacturers of, you know, buying millions of units to put in their Xboxes and they can really cut the price down. Um, so o- I think on launch, you're getting a really good product. Um, and especially with this next generation, um, I think it's really exciting. I think it's, they're all 4K ready. They're all VR ready. I don't think there's ever going to be yeah. console VR, but it's, it's a crazy piece of hardware for that price. I think they're going to be like five, 600 bucks. Like you can't get anything as good as that for that price. So, yeah, exciting. I think that the for for me it's going to be like both of the machines are using uh, GDDR6 RAM, which is which, which is great. Um, I, I think that uh, was it the PS5 is expandable. Um, That's cool. So we haven't heard on the Xbox capacity for that yet. Um, I think. The big thing is, and also both of them have the same brain. They're both using the AMD Z2 uh, for like, and it can go up to 8K. The The big question is, uh, I haven't really seen what the, uh, what the, the GD, uh, you, you know, what the, the graphic um, processor is on, uh, on both machines to compare. I think that um, if from what I've heard, because based off of, you know, right now the Xbox One X is the most powerful out there with like 6.4 teraflops. Um, I know that like Series X is more powerful than that. I haven't heard how that compares with the PS5, um, but uh, I'm probably going to go with the graphics processor. The other thing to consider and we answer this question every week. People with PS4s always have Wi-Fi issues, always have <laughs> network connection issues. So, are, are is Sony upping their game on the on the connection uh, side of things, which they've always sort of not? Re- I I would like Xbox's infrastructure is based off of uh, online play. I I would say a lot more. There's a lot more games that are on. Uh, the PlayStation that are more, you know, solo experiences. Uh, and, and now in this current generation, they've, they've really kind of popped on the, uh, uh, on the multiplayer uh, and really kind of stepped that up. But uh, that's going to be the, the big issue, um, you know, connectivity. I, I get cross platform on a couple of games and um, uh, unfortunately my, my PS4 friends are, are, um, they're always lagging. They always lag out or drop out of the mid game. So, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I ranted for a little too long. <laughs> um, well, you pretty much covered it. Um, the all the specs on it look really good. And when you were asking about the GPU, the um, spec that they posted was um, 10.28 teraflops. So basically, faster than the last generation. Um, I think you pretty much nailed the one thing that um, you have to worry about, which is the network um, connection, their Wi-Fi connection. That so far um, the, on the PlayStations, that does seem to be their weak link. Um, maybe with the PS5, they'll you know fix that 
But up to this point, that does seem to be the one place where they are um, weaker than things like the Xbox. Otherwise, the hardware specs on it for this day and age are awesome. Um, yeah. Five years from now, who knows? <laughs> but for now, through the conceivable future, you know, the next three years, four years, it looks like a really solid system. Yeah. I, 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 and, and, and let's be honest, like... Uh, the difference between these consoles and, and maybe I'm going to get like some flame for this, but it's really the difference between buying a Camaro and a challenger. Either way, you're going to be pretty happy with whatever you have. But the thing is, is you're going to buy it, whether or not you're, you're in the Chevy camp or in, you're in the Dodge camp at this point in the game, you know, there's not going to be a lot of people kind of moving across and, and, uh, you know, Stadia kind of came in, tried to be like a Tesla, you know, hey, this got this alternative and, and it didn't really add up to its promise. Um, and, and, and so I think that we're going to see some other, you know, uh, things with cloud gaming, but I, I Xbox, um, I, it, it, it's, it's that connectivity issue. And, and the weird thing is, is I look at the comparisons and and nobody ever compares the networking and 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 it's always overlooked and i think it's it in modern gameplay it's the number one thing that you should be looking at which one is going to keep you online best i don't know good answer. i mean i was very underwhelmed by the presentation and they seem to be afraid to announce a price so that makes me think it's going to be like $800. I, and at, at that point, you might as well spend an extra 200 to get yourself a decent computer. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's, yeah, I, I totally agree. If, if it's $600, maybe, you know. Um, if, if it's $800, now you're starting to get into like, like, I don't know if the market can bear that. Yeah, oh, that, that's yeah. a pretty hefty price. Um, yeah. I don't think I'd pay yeah. that much for a console. Uh, yeah, okay. and here, here, here's the funny part. So just stick a pin in that, Alec. We'll come back to that in, in November and whether or not you'll be laughing at me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I will probably be buying the new Series X. <laughs> And you're going to say, how much did you pay for that? And I'm going to say how much I paid for it. And then you're going to go, that's dumb. And I'm going to go, yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, let's take another question from Sean here, um, who has the Nighthawk AC3200. Um, he loves it, but I'm wondering, what's the best Wi-Fi extender to use in my garden? So outside. Um, the outside um it so it depends if you can place your extender in a place where it is not going to get rained on or or yep. or have any sort of electrical issues um otherwise there is a really cool device that we have uh that is a extender for outside Yep, the outdoor Orby. Yes. Or yep, I like to call a, it the outdoor B. And the yes. outdoor Orby works on any router now. It doesn't specifically yes. have to connect to a Orby. Yes. Yep. And that and thing is like a mailman. It will work yes. in rain, sleep, sun or shine. And it yep, is completely a, sealed and it's um, weather resistant. As Ben said, rain, sleep, sun, it doesn't care. And um, it looks basically almost like a mailbox put up on its side and flattened a little bit. Yep. And I remember the first time I saw it, uh, we were we were literally having it dunked for five days at CES. Uh, just like a garden hose was just draining on it. And it was working fantastic. Well, at one event that we had um, when we first launched that product, we created a um, little plexiglass case with a shower head inside and it inside um, that case with water constantly running over it. We actually had that wired in so you could connect through Wi-Fi on it. 
So it showed, yeah, even when water's pouring on it constantly, it was running great. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. my suggestion too. So I was trying to allude to it, but you guys, you guys caught on. Um, cool. So uh, is there a benefit from switching from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz um, to versus Smart Connect on my Net, Nighthawk RX80? I tend to connect everything to 5 gigahertz when I can. So this is kind of a conversation about what's the use case for 2.4 versus 5. Um, I would say that, you know, 2.4 is great for IoT and low demand devices. Um, you know, stuff that just needs a little trickle of internet, that's what you want to put on that 2.4. Plus it goes further. So, you know, if you have stuff like a, a ring doorbell or something, it'll reach all the way outside. Um, and, and then, yeah, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I would actually say, uh, a, 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 a not so unique um, use case is hand me down um, devices. So you got kids, you give them like the older devices or a Kindle. Those usually only can connect to the 2.5 or 2.4. And that's why I have mine split between 2.4 and 5 is my devices are connected to 2.4. Uh, my uh, daughter's uh, devices like our Kindle, uh, they can only connect to, to the 2.4. And so I have it um, split off and connected to that. Yeah, and a lot of the IoT devices, well, not a lot, but there's a segment of IoT devices that only connect up to 2.4. And when you use something like Smart Connect, they can get kind of confused. Yep. Um, and we've seen that on you know very specific um, products. But if you can split it out, then that takes care of any problems that you may have with those questionable IoT devices. Yeah, yeah, because uh, her her Kindle would would not like figure out for the life of it where the internet was, you know. Yeah, it, it was because it it was it got confused by the five G. Cool. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, we have a. Pretty cool question uh, from uh, Marcial. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, any voiceover enhancement updates for the app in the near future for us blind individuals? Thank you. Um, that's a great That's suggestion. a really great question. Yeah, we yep. will and, definitely bring that and up. We will definitely bring that up after this. Um, just having that uh, adaptability for, for you, know, uh, you know, different people. Um, are it, it, it's definitely it's needed and thank you for bringing that up because um you know, bringing that awareness up to us can allow us to um to make that suggestion but that's fantastic and and yes we'll definitely pass that information along and strongly recommend that we do that yeah totally it's great to have uh people come in the chat and make those kind of suggestions um because it shows that you know this is something that we need and something we should do. And there's people that want it. So uh, yeah, as Ben said, we'll definitely bring it up with the product team and uh, hopefully get those improvements rolled out pretty quickly. Um, question from Kevin. Well, more of a comment from Kevin Hart here. Um, just purchased two EAX 80s and the RAX 200. Is that a good match? That's the best match in the business. That's, <laughs> that's the best you can get. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, cool. So uh, we caught up again. So um, I'm going to uh, segue to another question that Angela asked. And as a side note, it turns out he did spell segue correctly. I didn't know that that's how it's spelled. Uh, but uh, we kind of started to touch on it a little bit. Uh, cloud gaming and, and that versus the next gen. You, you said it was the Tesla, um, Ben. And, and I'm curious yeah. to know... Um, do you think it's going to hold up in the next generation of consoles versus, you know, these heavy hitters like the Xbox and the PS4 or PS5? So um, I would say the reason why I, I, I said it was a, a Tesla is because, as we know, when Tesla first came out, it was it was a disruption, and everybody was like, "What an electric car? What?" You know, and and then pretty soon you started seeing manufacturers, even like Chevy, you had has you know, electric cars. Um, Chrysler has electric cars. You never would have thought that that American car companies would jump on that. And so I I say it like that because 
that's the direction that it's going to go. It's that if you if you take a long view of it, it more and more stuff moves towards that cloud uh, type scenario. It, are we a hundred percent there yet? Not quite. Um, are we there yet? Probably in the next generation after this. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to be the last generation of uh, a console that sits on your, you know, book ca case or your shelf that actually has, um, you know, a, a large storage here. Um, I, I think that everything else is going to kind of e like move towards towards the cloud, but. In order to do that, before we can move to the cloud, we need to get uh, broadband more widespread and also broadband speeds of, of higher nature. Um, we're lucky where we are, you know, we, we can get gig if we wanted to, but you know, there's, there's people that are still suffering with like 20 down and 10 up uh, in, in a good portion of the country. So. Once the broadband infrastructure is there, and even fiber infrastructure, I, I think it'll 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 be the standard, but not at this moment. It's more of a specialty. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, with how much time is between these generations, um, you know, by the time the next one's coming out, um, I don't know, twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. I feel like cloud services are going to have become so strong and. Wi-Fi to support that as well. That um, yeah, this might be the last generation of physical consoles. It might just be a server at some point, um, pretty soon. Yeah. Which is an interesting thought. Uh, nope, it's yeah, going to be a I, jack I, plugged I, into the back of your head. <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah. skip over them completely. Then the next one's Whoa. just a, the Matrix. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I just learned. I, I think Mario I'm going to go the, the total opposite direction. I think it's going to completely fail because of the ISPs. The ISPs aren't going to let the cloud gaming become a thing unless they can charge the customer way more for the data they're using. That is of, a huge consideration I, as well. Yeah. And and I think cloud gaming right now is such a niche person, uh, niche amount of people that would want that. It's either they're gaming on a console or PC or they're gaming on their phone. And there really isn't that person in between that wants to play full-on games but not have to pay for the hardware so i think they, they they're satisfied either mobile gaming or they are already gaming on a console yeah and i, I think the key also the other the other key portion is um you know currently in in the in the current um administration net neutrality is is out the window and so once that was out the window then uh then isps could charge for you know, whatever data plans, usually they give you like, you know, one Terra. Um, and, and, but due to COVID, uh, you know, they took away those restrictions, which has been pretty nice. But, the, you know, once COVID kind of starts slowing down or people stop talking about it or, or people ignore it, um, I think you're going to start seeing those data caps come back. And it's the data caps that are really going to be the gatekeepers for any sort of cloud stuff. Uh, because I know I butt myself up against the edge of my data cap almost every month, and it's because I game and I stream. Yep. And the specific data, I mean, they can go after Google or Amazon, whoever's doing these gaming services, and say, you got to pay us and allow our customer to play these games. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a little bit of... Uh, uh, you know, some highway robbery, you know, people holding people up until they kind of figure out, you know, what is it that, that we're doing that can make you money and what are you doing that can make you money? <coughs> well, they just need to run everything through VPN tunnels and then the ISPs won't actually know the packets that are inside and what they are. Are they gaming packets? Are they video? You know? Hey, that is, all. that's also true. Um, and, and for that, uh, uh, like and subscribe Michael's uh, secret channel. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it's going to be tough. Like, uh, those data caps really suck. I'm, you know, I'm not going to, it just sucks because, uh, you know, uh, you know, I had my mom stay for, for Christmas break and she was here for 10 days. 
not knowing that like 4K video sucks about eight gigs of, uh, every hour and blew through all my data within like four days. It's just amazing. That's very unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I really yeah. hadn't considered that. I mean, it, you'd have to have that. And they're kind of a gatekeeper at a certain point, so you have to have them kind of be on board with it, which is certainly not going to come for free. So we'll see. Yeah, but um, that's think, an amazing question. So yeah. All right. Well, we had a a, a couple more come in, so we could uh, answer those. Um, but and I can from, answer Vanessa's question that she had on the outdoor Orby and would it work down at minus sixty degrees Fahrenheit? And the answer is no, but the temperature range for it is minus four to 122. And normally most electronics, once you get past um, below 32 degrees, then thing, parts start freezing and the electronics don't work. The outdoor RV does have a small heater in it to try to keep it warm, but it can only do it down to about minus four degrees. You're hitting minus 60. I don't think there's any electronics that are gonna survive that without a really big heater inside. Yeah, that's that's, Definitely, uh, I mean, I, I don't even think that T forty seven air speeders would would work in the Arctic in those conditions. That's that's a that's a ner very nerdy uh, Star Wars reference for some of you out there. <laughs> All right, um, follow up from well, new question from Shady Joker here. Um, should I keep the password that was given, or should I change the password? for my safety, um, assume, assumedly on a um, Netgear router. So we have no idea what that password is. So yeah. it, it, that sticker goes on and it's out the door. Yeah. We, we, never, we never look at it. That, that's, that password's probably one of the, like I said uh, er, earlier, I kept mine because it's one of the safer passwords I've ever, uh, I would have never have thought of plopping those uh, alphanumericals together so yeah. um usually usually your personal um passwords there's always a way to kind of hack it if if they can pick up you know certain things off of off of your social media or or you know who you you know just little clues um you know um and uh but yeah i think it, i i would just keep it i it it the password test for me is if I can barely remember it, it's probably a good password. Yeah, they're they're decent medium level passwords. They're just, yeah. they're still alphanumeric and they're still using real words. Yeah. So if someone was doing a brute force hack on it, um, they probably would be able to crack it sooner or later simply because they are standard words that are being um, linked together. But it's it's a good solid you know password if you want to make it a lot harder. Then you've got to start going into um, the hard um, passwords that have numbers, letters, um, um, extra characters, and then they become impossible to actually remember. Yes. Uh, one thing, though, is if you're going to keep that password, don't leave the sticker that came with it that has the password on it on your router. Everyone will be able to figure it out if it's sitting right there. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So um, let's see here. I'm trying to keep track. Um, Armin has a question. We are still waiting for 5G home networks um, to become the norm in today's home. I think that's more of a statement, and he's right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah 5G you are right. Is still we're trying. It's only in certain metropolitan areas where they even have 5G, so it hasn't even you know covered the nation or even come close to it. And then getting into the home. They're just starting to work on 5G devices that um, you can have in the home that have sort of little transmitters from the outside in because 5G doesn't like going through walls um, for um, when we're talking cellular. And so um, it's going to be a long time before that actually rolls out. Okay. Looks like we have another question from... Uh, or a statement from uh, Marcio, who was asking about the uh, um, the app uh, voiceover. Um, they installed the CM1200 modem and the RX200. 
Um, nevertheless, had issues with the Apple. I hope the issues were not, yeah. you know, technical issues. I hope it was what you mentioned earlier, which we, we can work on addressing. But if you did have any technical issues with the app's functionality, um, definitely let us know. Aside from the, the voiceover. Um, okay. Um, Places and Spaces asks a question. Um, Orbi AX, they have the Orbi AX 6000 and the RAX 12, um, 120. I can't read today. Um, I also have an internet subscription of one gig. I run the two router separately and the speeds are great. Should I connect them together or leave them separate? Is the Orbi AX a satellite or is it a router? Well, if he actually has them running separately, then he'd be it's running be a as a router, router yeah. not on the satellite. And it really depends on what your needs are. If you want just one um, network that covers everything with the same SSID, then you would want to um, connect them um, together and then put your Orbi AX in um, access point mode. And then there are, if the Orbi AX is just acting like a, um, a satellite repeater almost. But it's a big waste of an Orbi AX at that point because it's not using any of the functionality of the AX. It's just an access point. Um, it's saying that the uh, Wi-Fi is turned off on the RAX120 and used as part yeah. of his MOCA setup. Yeah. Okay. Let's see yeah. here. Um. Sometimes it's hard finding what the name of the device is on my router that I want to work with. Uh, how can I make that easier? So is this um, the devices on my router that I'm working with? Is this kind of like a QoS question? Like can't find the, the name of the device that you want to give more or less bandwidth? Um, I'm a little confused on that one. Do you guys know? Oh, so sometimes it's hard finding the name of the device on my router that I want to work with. How can I make this easy? It's coming. Uh, I know that you have an XR500, I believe. Mm, it's coming okay. on Duma 3.0. So there's going to be an easier way of uh, handling the device manager. Yeah, I totally forgot that Shady Joker has a uh, has an XR router. Yeah. So that makes sense. Okay, so he's talking about QoS. I just yeah, think. it's coming. So we're, we're, we're fixing that. Um, also, if you want to just like forget all the devices that are that are on there, uh, uh, you know, because you got a bunch of stuff that you're just not using anymore, you can now mass uh, get rid of it, everything, which is nice. Because um, I don't know about you, but like I've got like I've got so many like dead end dead branches that I got to prune. So <laughs> it'll it, it'll be better. Cool. Okay. Dan says that T-Mobile has 5G home internet, mostly for yeah. out in the country for now. Part of the deal with buying Sprint. I didn't even know they bought Sprint. That's kind of cool. They did. Um, that's why he is curious about the M5. Yeah, we get a lot of questions about the M5, especially for people that want to use it kind of far away from metropolitan areas. Um, it's definitely going to be a great yeah. device when it comes out. So we will let you know when we know for sure. Uh, we, we don't want to be keeping that from you guys. So, Yeah, well, you want to hear it first? You'll probably hear it first here. Yeah. Cool. But, uh, yeah, it... But you stay tuned. You know, I know that you keep asking, and, and we keep being coy about it, but, um, but yeah, other, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to... If, if we said um, next week, this is what you'd see. Boo! You know, <laughs> so. All right. Well, we're down to the last 20 minutes of the stream. So um, I'm getting close to the end. So if you guys want to get, uh, you know, more questions in, please feel free. We'll be here for another 20 minutes. Um, just another reminder to all the people watching. Um, it helps us a lot. Um, and the success of the stream um, when you like the video. So if you're, if we helped you out or you're enjoying the stream, um, definitely drop a like. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and, 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 and drop a comment if you if you thought that we were like helpful, you know. Um, they always you know like to hear you know comments from you guys. So, um, just uh, big thanks for you guys for for participating. That's why we do this every Friday. All right. Yeah, the, and um, 
Marcel, is that, I, I don't know, I just butchered your name, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you love your devices. Um, we just got to get better at, at being able to um, have accessibility for, for, for everyone, so. Yeah, totally. Uh, really important aspect of the app. So, uh, like I said, we'll we'll bring that up. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I guess we'll just wait for Angela to feed us some more fun questions. Yeah, and, and Vanessa, <laughs> thank you for that box quote. That's a great box quote right there. Your show is always yeah. spot on helpful. And I, I think that maybe next week we could have it like you know go across the screen. Always, always spot on helpful. Ta da. <laughs> We've got a, a nice, a nice personal question from uh, from Shady Joker. What are we doing this weekend? Well, I will be hopefully buying furniture, assembling furniture. It looks <laughs> right like. here. <laughs> yeah, your room's empty. You need some stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty empty, but this, this is it's the living room, not my room. This would be a very large bedroom. It'd be it'd be nice. I, I, I don't think it qualifies as the living room right now. I would not be living. In that room, yeah, <laughs> it's an echo chamber right now. It's an echo chamber. It's right now. It's like a giant. <laughs> you should get your guitar and your amp and just reverb out in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great introduction great. to the neighborhood. <laughs> Everybody would yeah, exactly. Immediately hate me. <laughs> Hi, neighbors. Um. So so you're doing uh furniture shopping? Yeah, furniture shopping. Darren, what do you what do you got going? I think I'm probably going to try to get a round of golf in this weekend. Golfing. All right. Oh, wow. Mike, I, I got to get back out there. Yep. I've got to build a um, deck platform for a hot tub that's being delivered the weekend after this one. Uh, that should be. Are, are you going to be doing that with um, pressure treat? Or are you going to be doing it with like the sort of the plastic recycled uh, yeah. deck material? All pressure treated stuff. Yeah. Yep. You know, nice pressure treated four by fours on the. Um, the concrete pillar blocks and then all the deck boards are two by six pressure treated since it rains a lot where I'm at. And technically we're in the equivalent of almost a rainforest in the Santa Cruz mountains with all the redwood trees. It's gotta be something that can handle a lot of rain, but be non non slip. So you don't slide on it. No yep. plastics. Yep. Um, are you, so are you sinking that hot tub into the deck? No, no, nope. okay. the deck, um, Flat deck, hot tubs going on top of it. And if I ever want to actually have it sunk in, I'll just build a deck on top of a deck. Yeah, it, the the huge key and and almost like a, a thousand years ago, I, I used to deliver hot tubs. Um, the, uh, the big key is that uh, accessibility, like being able to get to the motors and stuff, it's mechanical. It's going to break, break, break down. Yep. And... Uh, you know, if you have it sunk into the deck, you limit your ability to pull off those sides, which limits your whole ability to to do any sort of fixing. And um, and then you 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 curse your deck later on. Um, uh, that's kind of speaking from from I would say you, you could probably uh, you know read between the lines. I I had that experience. It was terrible. Uh, and also making sure that um, it can handle two to three thousand pounds of water, not including the rest of the hot tub and everything else. Right, because what you end up doing when you sink it into the deck, you're actually, you know, most of the time you're putting it on a concrete pad that you've already poured under, that's already hidden underneath the deck. Yep. Um, and, and, and just making sure that it fits, uh, I, you know, that is also another, I've seen it a couple times where, um, you brought it out, put it, tried to put it in, and it's like, you know, the old uh, measure nine hundred times and cut once <laughs> thing. Um, yep. and still get it wrong. And still get it wrong. Where it's like, the worst is when it's like, uh, like three quarters of an inch off. Yep. And uh, it, it, the only way to, you know, you try to fix it with chop saws, and it gets, uh, it gets a huge mess. So. Uh, good luck. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. It'll be, that'll be fun. Well, especially since I have to build it on a slope because our entire yard is a slope. So oh, one even side better. is higher than the other. So it'll be fun. That'll, yeah, that'll be fun. Because, uh, 
Yeah. Now, now you're dealing with lots of mathematics. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, I hope you can pull that off in one weekend. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work. Oh, no problem. The last deck I built, it took me exactly two days to build over a weekend, so I'm sure I can do it. <laughs> okay. Well, we have another question from Places and Spaces. Any advantage to using the 1G or the 5G port on the RAX 120 with only a gig internet speed? Or is it mainly just for an excess of one gigabyte? I'd say mostly for file transferring, if you're doing any of that. Yep. And it is mainly yeah. for an excess of one gig because yeah. there are devices now that are starting to be multi-gig. And this way you've already got the multi-gig built in when you get those devices. But you're not gonna be able to pass one gig if the device connected to it is only maxing out at a gig. There you go. Um, thanks to Shady Joker who tuned in for most of the show. Uh, oh yeah, well, he'll be back next Friday. So we're having Definitely. some regulars. Thanks, thanks. Go ahead, Ben. Oh no, I was just saying thanks for all everybody like Dan, M Dog, Vanessa, Shady Joker. It's it's been a, a, a awesome having you guys come back. Yeah, totally. We love to have regulars come in, update us on their network. And, and, but we, also for all the all the new people and and and, and people that I missed, um, you know, it's also it's also good to have you guys here. You know, getting new questions in, helping people out. That's why we're here. Um, wonder why somebody gave us a down. One, one person disliked this. I'm, I'm just going to obsess about it for a while. We get we get a pretty consistent one dislike. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. Um. It's it, it's that one person that we just couldn't help, you know, and it's just they're just out of their Wi-Fi is just still too slow. Um, well, if it, if it was all perfect, then they'd think we we were jiggling with the numbers. You know, but getting <laughs> yeah, that one shows, true. you know, it's all honest and above board. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This, it, this is a a homegrown, honest, down to earth stream. You know, exactly. Cool. So ten about ten minutes left. Oh, there we go. Up to 15. Thank you, guys. Um, about about 10 minutes left. Angelo, do you have any any amazing questions that you can pull? Yeah, we, we, uh, we're we running on Steam here, Angelo. Okay, he, he gave, he us, gave, us, one. He gave one. us one. The year is 1999. You just moved, and you have to set up internet in your house. What is that like? 1999. Well, I was uh, I was two, so I'd probably not do it. <laughs> wow. Um, I am connecting my Dreamcast to my. Uh, uh, I think at that point in time, it's still it's still dial up, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. 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 That it would still be dial up. It had a broadband adapter for the very few people that could get broadband at the time. Yeah, I was in Seattle at the time. And the interesting thing is my dream, the true story, playing online with my dream, Dreamcast and using their internet browser prompted me to actually buy my first gaming PC. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Very cool. You, you buy it and put it together, or was it just... I, I bought it, put it together, and I think within three weeks I was playing EverQuest. And ah, yes. Yeah, Which me. was also known as EverCrack because you it got was. so addicted to it. It was a, I was like, what? There's a whole world of people out there playing? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was still dial up. So I. I it was the modem was connected. It split between my phone and and my computer, and that networking was terrible. Wasn't that where you couldn't yeah. be on a phone call and on the on the internet at the same time? Yes, that correct. is correct. Okay, I, I I have brief experience with that. I do remember we had one modem that was like that. It was the first modem I remember us having, where like if somebody in my family had to take a conference call or something like I had to get off like my SpongeBob game or whatever I was playing. <laughs> SpongeBob. That's awesome. Like 
the it it was yeah it was really it was and, and anybody picked up the phone and started boop 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 it you know it would throw you off <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah yep. um, and running the Ethernet cable from one room to another uh, I remember that scary. like two. 2004 2005 still running like you know having um i bought bulk uh cat cable to run down the hall down the hall over the door frames down around oh yeah (laughs) use lots of staples lots of staples all the way down uh especially san franciscan uh railroad type apartments where it's like that one long hall all the way down the the apartment and then just running it to the different uh, bedrooms. And our router uh, was usually in the most, like, in, like, the weird, like, the, the worst spot that it could come in was always the place that it been, it would come in. And I remember it was always uh, DSL. And it was, it, it I think we always used, like, that weird, because it came in off of the sort of the same signal that, um the phone so where the phone would be in the kitchen traditionally is where yeah. we had to try to figure out how to mount the uh modem router to the wall oh and wow. vanessa happened to post um downloading files at 300 baud over government um autobahn network and i remember when i was in um college i um was trying to transfer stuff over to a friend of mine um, who lived in town and it took about eight hours to transfer the gigabyte file that I was trying to send over to him. And I could have gotten in the car and driven there and back in about 30 minutes. Wow. And that still would have taken like six, three to three and a quarter. Uh, exactly. Discs. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Where you'd have to chop up your file. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. about zip drive in 2000, right? Yeah, zip drive. <laughs> I remember like. Uh, doing recording, like audio recording then, uh, used a lot of zip drive stuff because it, it could hold larger quantities than, than like the three and a, and, and a half. Cause I think it was the zip drives are tape, weren't they? I never opened one up. Actually. And, I don't think they were tape because it was random access. And if it was tape, you would have okay. noticed when you, when it was trying to pull files, um, off of it. It would take a while because um, I played with some old tape drives, and it's literally you go to scan for a file, it zips by the start of the file, it stops, it zips back, and it just keeps bouncing closer and closer until it finally gets to that file. I don't know how people managed to live through that, but that was painful. Yeah, and then CD burning came out, and those things were like five hundred dollars to get like a CD burner for your PC oh, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember I used to rip movies off of like Redbox DVDs. I shouldn't say that. Um. <laughs> no, you're digitally archiving them for the apocalypse. That way they'd still be around. Exactly. After the apocalypse. It was out. all going into my time yep. capsule. <laughs> right. Uh, you were looking out for everyone else's needs. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have, um, you know, about four minutes left uh, for the stream, and we had one person come into the chat and say they need some help. They're sad right now. Um, let us know what's up. Um, if you need tech support or, you know, you, you need us to give you a motivational speech, we're, we'll do either. We're, <laughs> well, we're here to help we can out. Do, we, can do, we can do either. We can do it at the same time. Um, we, you know... Uh, we're, we're, we're a triple threat. We, we could actually do, you know, uh, interpretive dance and, and a song maybe. Um, I think you're on your own on that one. <laughs> yeah. I think that's you. Ben. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay. Ben's, Ben's got the interpretive dance. I think Michael could give a good, uh, motivational speech. Um, <laughs> you help him with the tech stuff, Darren, and then I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh um, and put your question in. You got you got a few more minutes. You got about yeah. six minutes. My monitors are blacking out. Well, monitors, unfortunately, we don't make any monitors, so that's that's kind of an issue that that I don't know if we could help with, but we could try. Um, well, the first thing to do is make sure um, your connections aren't loose. A yeah. lot of times, um, if your plug that. is only partway in there, the monitor will go in and out um, yep. a lot. 
Um, also double check the power to the monitor that that um, plug is also connected um, properly. Um, you could um, replace the uh, monitor cable going to your um, PC in case there's something wrong with that cable. Those are usually the first three things just to take care of the basics. And graphics card drivers, make sure they're up to date and working. Oh, down. yeah. Especially if you have a, a monitor that has a, a higher refresh rate than your previous monitor had. That will throw things off, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's interesting when you mention the refresh rate, that could also cause it to black out if the um, video card and the monitor are having problems staying in sync. Yes. In which case, it will black out as it tries to resync back up. And one thing you can do there is change the refresh rate on your video card, change the resolution on the video card, and try to find um, a, a resolution usually slightly lower that might um, actually be more stable. I've never run into any of those problems, but I, I'm interested to hear about them. That's that's interesting to know that the whole refresh rate sync thing can just crash your whole thing. It's funny, just speaking of things crashing, um, I watched this video the other day. Um, it's this background that if you put it on an Android phone, it bricks your phone. And there's this whole explanation of it. Um, okay. Basically, the conversion algorithm to take a Adobe RGB image, which is what the um, background is in, Adobe RGB. It's a protocol for color. And convert it yep. to sRGB for the Android screen. It has an algorithm that maxes out at 255. And this one pixel on this background had a specific RGB value that rounded up to 256. 256. Huh. And so it oh, crashes no your whole phone if you put it on your phone <laughs> like twitter was like freaking out about it because they're like what is happening and then everybody's like i want to put it on my phone and see what happens and then they all break their phone <laughs> but i just thought that was kind of cool talking yeah. about like yeah, that, monitors and screens and graphics and stuff very poor error trapping on their um on the conversion tool yeah. normally anytime you go beyond a certain beyond a range you should actually put code in there for error trapping that will grab that and then just dump it instead of actually trying to um, do something with it. Yeah. But it sounds like basically it was going beyond the bounds. That was one way that people used to, that people actually hacked into the UC Santa Cruz um, system um, is they were able to log in remotely and then they were able to upload a file that actually went beyond the bounds. So the top portion of the file was actually overwriting part of the system files. And they had the code that would be overriding it, basically a back door that allowed them to get in. Um, UC Santa Cruz fixed it once they found out the um, problem, um, basically by putting that error trapping in so you couldn't overwrite the bounds. But it does sound like this allowed it to overwrite that bounds and go that one extra data point higher than what it would accept. And they didn't reject it. They tried actually running with it. Yeah, and, and I think it's actually a, a pretty nice picture. And, and the guy didn't mean for... It's a be brick in phones. Oh, are you, did you look it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a gorgeous picture. Yeah. It's so nice. It is. <laughs> yeah, there's it's literally so gorgeous. I would put that pixel. on as as my background on my phone. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, brick, brick. Yeah. Um, I, I think so, we yeah. solved uh, Zelter's uh, uh, issue. Th thanks. I have an old PC. I yeah. think I need to restart my PC. You know, um, those are those are the kind of things that we love to do. Um, we'll, hopefully, that'll help you with your sadness. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've got what one minute left. Wow, here we are. Yeah, we made it to the end. Um, I think we'll uh, we'll close it out here. But uh, thanks everybody who tuned in and asked questions. Um, it's always fun for us to come and answer them. Um, you know, this is one of the highlights of our weeks to come and talk to you guys, and we hope you uh, feel the same about joining us. Yep. Thanks to everybody who liked the stream. It helps us out a lot. It helps us, uh, you know, get higher up on the YouTube algorithm and uh, bring more people here so we can help them out with their uh, their networks. So with their networks. Uh, so monitors are blacking out when he plays games. It's yep. got to be a refresh rate issue. Yeah, double double check the games to make sure that they're not. Um, Ha they don't have a specific um, setting in there for um, video um, size and possibly refresh rate, and that that's going beyond what the your video card or monitor can handle. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, if it's only in the games, then it's got to be a setting in the game that's actually pushing it beyond what your system can handle. 
Okay. Oh, we got one last, last question that came screeching in. Liberty Action, R6300, and Jellyfin, MB Plex. It worked? I've never even heard of what Jellyfin is. And as far as Plex, um, since you can't actually mount Plex directly on the R6300, um, you have to be running it on something else. And if so, then it should be able to run with the 6300, um, possibly needing port forwarding. But um, otherwise, you can't actually load modules into the 6300. Yeah, Je uh, Jellyfin is a uh, media, um, uh, sort of uh, another like media server, like Plex. Ah, then yeah, you can't mount anything on the R6300. Um, so that would have to be loaded on a PC or a NAS box um, running. And then it's um, agnostic to the router that it's connected to. Yeah. All right. Well, and on, we, that, uh, one, uh, yeah, so. on that note, we, I think we got them all. So, um, right. yeah, yeah I, I already wrapped up, but if you guys have anything else to say, please feel free. Yeah, I think you said it all. Yes. Thanks everybody for, for tuning in yep. and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Take care, everyone. See you later, everyone.